My name is Jesse Rykor. I'm a computer programmer and I have a YouTube channel called Co-op for Two where I play cooperative and mystery board games. And today I'm going to tell you about a set of tools, a plugin for OBS, which is the software I use to do live streaming. And this is a plugin or a suite of tools that I use to help me interact with the chat during live streams. So when I play games, these mystery games, I'm frequently looking down at the table and studying some document and occasionally someone in the chat will want to get my attention. So the first thing, all of these tools, this plugin, uh, deals with interacting with the YouTube chat comments as they're live during a stream. So one of the things this tool does is it monitors the chat and if it sees certain keywords, it will flash a light that I have mounted to my table. It's a blink one light, a tiny little USB light. You can see it right here. So this can uh, flash and light up in different colors. So the first thing the tools do is they watch the chat live and if they see certain patterns in the messages, they flash a certain color and then there are hotkeys for me to reset, turn the light off, etc. The second set of um, features that the plugin and its helper tools has is that it will show me a docked list of a, a doc in OBS with all of the comments as they come in. Now OBS has a built-in YouTube chat feature for that. But what's different here is that I can double click on any comment and have it overlaid in a lower thirds, highlighting it on the screen for everyone to see. That works in conjunction with a plugin called Downstream Keyer so that it can overlay it on any screen. I'll show you that. The other feature, so those are the two main features, and then there's a mobile app for Android or I guess iPhone, any web browser enabled uh, device that will let me manage the chat comments and highlight them on the screen. That can be very useful during a live Q&A session if I want to go through comments and highlight them. And then there are a couple other features that are built in like a little voting system and some statistics, persistent statistics over multiple sessions. And then some tweaks to that. So let me show you uh, what it looks like. If you look here at the main window of OBS, now I've got this, my normal OBS window is much bigger than this, but to fit on this YouTube video, I've made it much smaller. So here it is docked to the side. You can see it's got a little text box here for the YouTube video ID. You would if you, I have my OBS patch, so it sends a broadcast signal when you select a video ID. So I'm going to show you that right now. I'm going to select Manage Broadcast through OBS. I'm going to select, I'm going to create a new unlisted broadcast, a little test broadcast. I'm just going to say Create It. And you'll see that it will automatically populate that video ID, so I don't have to remember to do it. If you're normally working with YouTube and you have some scheduled videos, which is what I normally do, you just select it from here, one of the ones scheduled, and it would populate this ID. Now, something else that the tool does as soon as this gets populated is it does this push browser URLs action, which I can do manually if I wanted to, but as soon as I do it, it does that. And what that feature does is it goes through all your sources and it looks for any browser sources that are referring to a live chat. And I use that for when I want to show a split screen on the screen interacting with the chat audience. It basically shows an overlay of the YouTube chat. And so we're, this is what we're going to do. We're going to click this button to open browser. I'm going to open a web browser to the YouTube page, which is what it's done, of that video. It's just a little convenience feature. Um, all right, so I've opened up a YouTube page showing the video that it's not started yet. I'm going to start the video. I'm going to start streaming this test stream right now. 
All right, so what has happened now? You can see that you've got some startup messages in here showing that this uh, YouTube chat plugin is working. It's actually logging the chat to a file as well. That's an option. It says it's connected. Um, and it's streaming now. This video is live. And here it is live where I can type some comments and I'm going to type a couple of comments. Okay, so I put that comment in. Let's go back to the OBS window. We'll see there it pops up the username, the comment. Let's just write a, a couple more. Comment. Okay, so there we have it. And then, and here is one with an emoji. Let's just use an emoji here. Okay. Okay. So let's send these messages. There's about a five second delay occasionally for it to do it. You can tweak those things, but I find this works fairly well. Okay. So here are the chat messages. They're being logged to a file with timestamps. And let's show you what happens if I use my phrase that suppo that someone would use to alert me. So let's, uh, what, how do we turn this off? Okay, Jesse, check the chat. The words that I've got it configured for are just these two. Jesse, check in any, in any, it's a regular expression that can be anyway. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you the light here as I click submit and then go out of the way and you'll see it's going to come up here and say that it's alerting. Okay. So you can see it says, Jesse, check the chat and then the alert is triggered and this is what it would be showing on my desk that would catch my attention. And then I've got a hotkey configured that I can reset that light. Okay. So that's the first set of features. Um, automatically pushing the video, detecting the video ID when you select a broadcast, pushing it to the chat. I haven't shown you that. I'll just show you right now. If I click on this scene, chat front, you will see there is the overlaid chat from YouTube. This is a YouTube browser source. And the only thing this plugin has done for this is automatically set this URL so I don't have to remember every video to go in and manually set it. Okay, then it's picked up the comments in the chat. When it detected certain keywords, it triggers that light and that alert. It'll time out after a little bit of while and turn off the light, or I could turn off with a hotkey. Okay, so here's the, I'm gonna show you now the next thing it does. If I click on, if I double click on an entry, you will see it shows up as a lower thirds highlighted message here. You can do the same thing for one with the emoji. Emojis work fine. Um, and you can see it's taken the avatar from the YouTube configuration and it's got different text sizes depending on the length of the message. In fact, we can test that. Let's make a long message as long. Let's try going to the YouTube's maximum length of 200 characters near the end. Now let's see if it fits everything. Okay, let's see what this message looks like when it pops up. So there it is. You can see it reduces the font when it's a longer message. There's the default when it's just short. Here it is longer. And you can see it'll sort of fade it between new messages. And if I double click again, it's going to turn it off here. And let me just show you a little bit about the technical aspect behind this. Now, uh, I've got a bunch of different scenes. For example, if I have my starting scene here, you can see it's overlaying it on whatever scene there is. So it's not a specific scene with this overlay. It's on any scene. And that's done by working with the downstream keyer plugin. This is something that lets you, this is, um, a plugin by someone named Exceldro. It's open source, as are mine. And this lets you overlay one scene on top of any scene you're working on. So here I've created this scene 
which is the overlay scene. And if I just click on that itself, let me turn it off and just go to it here. You can see what it is. It's a browser source that's just filling up this screen. And if I double click on it, it's much too big for this window, but you can take a look at what it looks like to configure this. It's just a local web page with information about how to connect to web sockets to my machine and a size, etc. So, and then a couple of other options you can set. So that is the web source that's pulling in this comment using WebSockets. And then it shows it on any scene using the downstream keyer. Now, one thing to show you is that it actually is smart enough to turn on and off the downstream keyer rather than just blank it out. So you'll see, you can see this little bar is highlighting the downstream keyer is on. If I just switch between these two, you can see it's fading between them. Now, if I turn it off, if I double click this, you'll notice it actually turned off this downstream keyer. That's just a little tweak rather than keeping it blank with a blank browser source. It actually turns it off to really minimize the CPU use. Okay, and then we've got a whole bunch of hotkeys for moving around this list, turning it on and off so that if you use an Elgato Stream Deck, for example, like I do, so that when I'm live streaming, I don't have to interact with this window. I can control everything through custom buttons. Let me show you another feature of it. I can turn it to auto. So I'm going to turn this this one on. Let's say I wanted to step through these as I was talking or during a break. I can just click this toggle auto and you'll see it will, It's you can configure certain times. It's going to wait a little time, then it'll turn this off, wait a little bit more, and then turn on the next one. And it'll just psych, it'll just move through these till it gets to the end and then it'll just sit there and wait on the end one until new comments come in and then switch to them. It'll turn off the last one before it waits. It'll actually keep the last one on a little bit longer. Um, okay, so that's the basic features of the plugin. Let me just turn off this auto toggle and show you, walk you through some of the options here. I'm gonna have to resize so it fits in this window. Okay, so the first thing you see here is command line to run the sort of background process. It's a Python script that's monitoring the chat, saving, telling it to save to a file, telling it what keywords to look for to turn on that light. And this is a Python utility I've written that makes use of the PyTChat open source Python library for monitoring YouTubes. Then we've got a bunch of options for whether to ignore or show emoticons, uh, the size of the font here, the downstream keyer to automatically turn on and off. If you didn't configure this, you could just have one on all the time. And it's got a list of scenes to automatically not show the downstream keyer on. If you had certain scenes that you never wanted to have a chat overlay, you could use that. But I actually use it differently. I'm going to show you that in a second. Um, and then there's this advanced option for auto turning on and off the automatic toggle here. And the way I use that is when I go to break, then I automatically have it go to the end and wait for new messages to come in during a break and it shows them overlaid and then it'll turn it off when I resume, when I return to a normal scene. So in that way, I always have the chat comments uh, cycling through during breaks, but when I come back, it doesn't auto cycle through them. So it turns them off. And then we've got some time options here. And then we have some manual messages that I've you can comment out with the double quotes. Now, this is useful if you're doing a live Q&A stream and you want to preload up some questions. So you could put the person's name like John. I wondered 
how you choose what game to play. And then someone else says, can we see more photos of your cat or see her in person? Okay, so some if I'm preparing for a live Q&A session, I might preload up a bunch of questions. I'm just going to click apply and close here. You can see it's stuck them in here at the beginning hasn't disturbed the other chat. The chat is still live. But now I can double click here and it will pop up that as if that was a question that I could answer. So if I'm live streaming, I can click on these and say, okay, I'm going to address this question now. Now I'm going to show you in a second the mobile app that's much more enjoyable to do this process of. So normally you might not even use this interactive doc just use it to show things. Um, okay, so before I show you the mobile app and stuff, let me just show you a couple more things. So I said that there were in the options this advanced feature for saying disable the downstream key or in certain scenes. So I have a scene here called um, info vote. It's not gonna show vote here, but okay. So what you see is this is another scene that I've custom set up to have a YouTube chat plugin overlay inside this scene. So it's not using the downstream key now. Now this is a custom scene with a split screen and the YouTube overlay browser source here. And this is showing the chat in a normal, now whatever I click gets sent to this browser source um, not using the downstream keyer. If for some reason you want, didn't want to use the downstream keyer, you could use this. Now when I switch off this scene, notice that'll be gone. And now it's switched back to the use of the downstream keyer. This is nice actually, because most of the time this is how I want something to show. But I'll show you in a second the vote system where I really want to have formatting of how this is shown side by side and not have it take up the lower thirds of the screen, but side by side. All right, so the voting system, what's the best way to show you this? Okay, I'm gonna use a little test feature here to show you a vote. I'm gonna start a vote by hitting a hotkey on my stream deck to start a vote. You could configure any hotkey you wanted. Let me go and start a new vote by clicking this one button. Okay, so I've pressed a button to start a vote and you can see what it shows. It shows this overlay as if it was a chat statement and here it is here. It's got a count up timer here and it says it's waiting for participants. And in fact, you could switch away to another comment or turn off the overlay entirely. And anytime you wanted, you could double click here to bring back the vote. Notice the timer is continuing it's just counting since the vote was open. It says it's waiting for votes. Now I could type a vote, but it's designed to ignore my votes, I believe. But let me just say, I vote we eat ice cream. I'll just say vote ice cream, but I think it's gonna ignore my vote. But it's looking in the chat for anyone typing vote something. Oh, no, it did record it. Okay, so you can see what it's done. It's added the my vote. I voted for ice cream, and it says who. And then I could change it. I could say that now I want to vote chocolate. And now it's going to change my vote when the new comment comes in. So now it says chocolate co up for two. It tells how many. Okay, and then I'm going to do a little... Thing here and simulate some voting. Okay, so I simulated a bunch of extra votes. It's a little hard to see on this small screen, but it's created a whole bunch of little votes by people. And now actually we can see the value of me having a custom scene where I use a split screen. So I'm going to click on that custom scene here. Let's see. Nope, not stats. There we go. Okay, so there you have it. Now you can see the votes coming in. You can see coffee, three people voted for, pizza, two people voted for, etc. And then when I wanted to, I can click the stop vote button. 
and now the vote is completed. It won't take any more votes. If someone types vote something, it'll just ignore it. And so this is just good for doing little informal votes. Note that, um, you know, it doesn't do any check it. You can't say only accept these five options. Um, it's just whatever someone types after the word vote or what uh, there are a couple regular expressions it'll parse for. So if they type vote for this or change vote to this, it, it still recognizes it. But, and if people spelled things wrong, they would come up like you can see pizza, pizza one. It doesn't do advanced stuff, but for quick and dirty, fast, little informal polls that most importantly doesn't require me while I'm live streaming to type in the options. I don't have to do anything. I just say, okay, who wants to do A or B? Click the button and then the people can just type their choices, free form, whatever they want. Just a quick way for me to get an idea of what people want to do. Then I close it and clear it and back to normal. Okay, so those are the basic features from within OBS, not dealing with the mobile app yet. Now we're gonna segue and I'll show you what the mobile app can do. Okay, this is a little awkward, but let's see if we can make this work. You're now seeing the video that I would be broadcasting during a live stream. This is my front camera. I'm sitting at my table here. I've got my stream deck that lets me control everything. If I show you a wide shot you might be able to see the buttons that i can switch between a little hard to get it in view here okay here we go so there's the views this is the page i have with controls for controlling the plugins actions during the live stream. I can move around between messages, activate them, turn them on and off, go to the next one and activate it, toggle on and off the auto display, clear the messages, cycle the tabs on the OBS interface, and then here are some voting buttons that I use and some scene switches to the dedicated voting one, and then I have a little button to turn off that blinking alert light. Now, normally I would not have during a gameplay have this tablet in front of me, but I've got it here to show you if I was having a live Q and A, how I might interact and show the questions as I'm answering them on the screen. I wouldn't normally have this tilted completely down and I might have it slightly out of the way so that it's not on camera, but I can still reach it. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to bring it close to me and I'm going to switch to the close up camera. Let's see, is that the best way to show it to you? Maybe so. Maybe so. Maybe split screen here. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my OBS interface, which you can't see. And I'm going to load in a previous stream, a short stream, an hour long, but with some chat comments. Uh, but I guess before we do that, let me just give you a tour here. Messages are gonna come up here. No, this is connected wirelessly. You can have, with this plugin, you could have multiple devices all connected live to the chat so that you might have someone, if you have got two people, one in front of the camera and one before the, behind the camera off scene, I'll show you how they might actually interact with the chat to help you. But I've got some basic buttons. Here's some options that would let you configure your WebSocket connection. You could even do it remotely. Here I'm just on my Wi-Fi network. And then I've got basic commands going to the first question, the second question, and turning off, turning on and off the auto feature. All right, so now I'm going to replay a recent live stream chat I had. You'll see the messages are going to come in very quickly now, but during at, when the stream was live, they were coming in much more slowly. So I'm going to launch the chat here and let's see what happens. Okay, so here we go. Here come the comments. And they would be coming in live. I'm not sure why we've got a couple of people whose 
avatar images are not showing up. I'm not sure exactly why that is. Maybe because I'm not connected to the uh, to the internet just on the Wi-Fi now. Okay, so here are the questions coming in. In fact, they're still coming in. If I scroll down to the bottom, you'll see they'll still come in live as they come. It's scrolling to the bottom as they go, but if I go up, they won't. It won't keep scrolling. If I wanted to show a comment on the screen, like Roberto's, I could just click it, and it would show it on the screen here, overlaid as a lower thirds. You saw me doing that from the OBS interface before, but now I'm doing it all from the tablet. I can click again to, to turn it off, or I could click down here to turn it off. So but down below in the dark is what's currently being shown. Um, what else can I do? I can go up to the first question asked. Now notice at the top are the ones that I manually entered. Like what game to play? Can we see more photos of your cat? Now you'll notice this little green thing here. That's a starred chat comment. I'm going to turn this off here for a second. Okay, so look at the bottom bar. You can see this is what it normally looks like. Now, if you wanted to mark, like let's say we've got lots of questions here and we wanted to, as we were looking at it, or maybe someone else who was helping me, wanted to highlight the questions that I should answer. They could tap to highlight them. Notice it's not showing it now. It's just highlighting it green. You could also tap on the avatar to do that, the person's face, to toggle it between green and not. And you'll notice when there are some messages that have been toggled, you'll see a little new box here. And if I click that, now I get a list with only the items that have been starred. So this is a good way to collect, if you've got a lot of messages in the chat or a lot of questions, a good way for you to mark ones you don't want to forget to handle or someone else could do it. And then when you answer one, you can just click again to, to remove it from this list. And eventually you'll get to all of them. And then you've got an empty list. You go back, turn that off, go back to the main list. So there we go. And then if you want to see if I wanted to just have these cycling on the screen as I go, I could select one and then turn on auto mode. And now you'll see that it'll slowly cycle through these just as you saw it did on the OBS from the OBS interface. So basically the mobile app is a way to remotely or in front of you without having to interact with the OBS um, dialogue without having to interact with the OBS window. Let me just turn this off here and go to the end. Without having to interact with the OBS window, have a much nicer, more comfortable chat interface of ans selecting questions and answering them. And this will work landscape or um, portrait mode. And if it disconnects, it'll reconnect. So it's actually fairly robust in terms of that. It doesn't, you don't have to connect in the beginning. You just connect this whenever you want. If it goes to sleep and wakes up, it'll reconnect seamlessly and get all the new messages, etc. So there you have it, uh, JR YouTube chat. It's not just the plugin, it's actually three different pieces. It's a plugin, it's a Python script that actually does the communicating with YouTube, and then the mobile app that gets this, and then the Blink Light hardware, which is of course optional. Uh, not in a great shape for using, it is open source, but it, it, it'll take some pain getting everything to work, I'm sure. But I just thought you might like to see what I use. now. Before I end, I should say there are alternatives, uh, other pieces of software or services you could use to do a similar thing. I don't know of any other one that works with the light alert on my table to catch my attention. But 
there are some paid services that act as sort of proxies, intermediaries between your recording and the YouTube chat or Twitch chat they work with as well. So StreamYard and Restream are paid services that have some chat features um, that would let you do similar things, select items to highlight on a lower thirds. And you don't need any special software for that. You just need to pay for their service. And before I wrote my own, I used a free mobile tablet based app called H2R Graphics, which is free and has a paid supported version as well, which does some of these similar things like showing a lower thirds and keeping a list of YouTube chat comments. It works quite well. I was quite happy with it, but it's a little bit more involved to get set up. It requires running some overhead, a third party program, remembering to run it. It does run afoul occasionally of YouTube chat API limits where this doesn't because this doesn't use the YouTube API. And uh, because of the way it's set up, it was too much overhead for me to deal with, except if I was doing a short live stream Q and A. This one, because of its nature, because it's always running in the background as a plugin, uh, I don't have to remember to set it up. It's just always running. And if I want to show some chat comments, I can. H2R Graphics also has a bunch more other features for showing various graphics, overlays and images and doing other stuff. So if you want to do more advanced involved stuff, you might want to check out H2R Graphics. Hope that's useful for you. I know it won't be. I know you will all start unsubscribing because you're here for board game content. And in fact, you won't be here at the end of this video, so you won't see this, but I'll see you on the next board game video.